Welcome to this presentation about different ways of putting text on slides without bullets. Before we get into the techniques, let's review five principles that should govern how we design our presentations, according to Swedish PowerPoint designer David J.P. Phillips. First, one point per slide. In other words, don't give the viewer a choice. Grab and maintain focus by having only one main point per slide. Here's a slide with two main points. Why two? Perhaps the designer thinks he or she is being more efficient, saving time with fewer slides. Wrong. Clarity and simplicity bring efficiency, not clutter. Also, the more often slides change, the better you can keep the audience's attention. Second, no sentences. Sentences belong in the speaker's notes, not on your slide. Instead of sentences, use short bits of text that enhance the image. Also, the image should enhance the text. This is the 50-50 rule of combining text and image. Each is incomplete without the other. Short, pithy quotes are an exception, of course, to the no-sentence rule. Third, use size. In this typical slide, notice how PowerPoint's default template tricks you into making the headline the largest object. Also notice how your eyes stay on the headline and not the content. But what happens when the headline is smaller? Notice how your eyes fall down into the content. So the largest text on your slide will be what is most noticed. So make sure you control that focus to your presentation's advantage. Fourth, use contrast. In these lists, there's no contrast. But watch what happens when contrast is applied as each bullet point is spoken about. Your eyes follow and stay focused on the high contrast element. In PowerPoint, these are often called bill lists and allow you to present information without a cluttered look. Fifth, limit the number of objects per slide. What's the optimal number of objects for a slide? Here's a test designed by David Phillips. You're about to see a slide with boxes on it. Notice how long it takes you to count the boxes on the slide. Ready? Here's the first slide. How long did it take you? Normally about two seconds to count ten of them. Now the next set. Again, notice how long it takes you to count them. Here it is. It took you about 1.2 seconds to count seven. Now the last set. Ready? Here it is. Almost instantaneous, right? 0.2 seconds. Now, in terms of time, these differences don't seem like much, but measured by cognitive load or cognitive resources required, the slide with five boxes was processed 500% easier than the slide with seven and 1,000% easier than the slide with 10. Multiply that difference over the course of an entire presentation and you end up with the usual boredom and irritation associated with PowerPoints. So, the optimal number of objects per slide? Fewer than seven. But wait a minute, doesn't that increase the number of slides? Yes, it does. However, the number of slides has never been the problem. The problem has been the number of objects on the slides. Now let's examine ways to apply these principles when it comes to putting text on images. Why images? Because each slide is supposed to contain one meaningful graphic that complements the text. That's the 50-50 rule. Now in this first technique, the background image on the right is blurred slightly so that the text can stand out. Blur is added by clicking on Picture Tools Format then Artistic Effects. That's where you'll find 23 basic effects and hundreds of variations. The image on the right has an 8% blur. You can also see several topography tips being used. Calling out numbers is often helpful for breaking up text and adding a point of focus. You can also see an attempt to match font with mood, in this case an adventure font for that word. Finally, making a keyword a different color type is an effective way to control the audience's focus. The next slide on the right has had color correction applied to it. 
The color correction tool is accessed the same way as artistic effects. First, click on the Picture Tools format, then Color Correction. That's where you can choose from a wide variety of color variations to help your text stand out. An additional topography tip is to use character spacing, also called kerning, to align text as a block, as you see with the phrase how to learn, whose letters have been condensed, and the word Photoshop, whose letters have been expanded. You can access the character spacing tool by first clicking on the font dialog launcher arrow, then on the character spacing tab in the dialog box. In this next set of slides, we turn our attention to the use of transparency layers. The after version on the right has had a transparency layer added to it so that the text stands out from the image. To make a transparency layer, first go to Insert Shapes, select a shape and draw it over the image. Click on Drawing Tools Format, then on Shape Fill. Add a dark color with no outline. Next, click on Shape Fill again, and this time select More Fill Colors. At the bottom of the dialog box that appears, you'll find the transparency slider. The transparency on this box has been set at 50%, enough to let the flag show through and the text stand out. Also on this slide, we see another topography tip applied, using size to add emotion. Notice how each subsequent line is larger than the last, climaxing in the single word, dead. In the next image is the use of a layer mask on the right with bright top and bottom borders. This effect achieves two important purposes. First, it takes the text off the character's face. When using images of people or animals, our eyes will automatically be drawn to their faces. Therefore, any distracting text should be removed from that area. Second, the layer mask allows the text to be used like a TV newscast chyron at the bottom of the image, which is familiar to your audience, and complements this particular image. In this next slide, we're traveling not only to outer space, but also dead space, sometimes called negative space which refers to empty parts of the frame or image where text can be placed. The red planet on the left is marred by text sitting on top of it. However, just right of the planet lies the emptiness of deep space, which provides a perfect home for our text. Our topography tips for this slide include taking advantage of right alignment when appropriate to add variation to the design. And since the text runs along the edge of the image on the right, right alignment is appropriate. Our second tip is to vary font color for contrast and emphasis. In this case, the main title and subtitle are in different fonts and different colors. Finally, the yellow color of the text is the same as the yellow glow around the planet and was selected with the eyedropper tool. Matching colors from the image with the colors in your added objects helps to establish and maintain a slide's overall color palette. To use the eyedropper tool, select the text to be colored, then click on Drawing Tools Format, then on Text Fill. Look in the options below for the eyedropper tool. Left-click on the eyedropper tool and move it to the color in the image you desire. Left-click again, and your text, or whatever is selected, will become that color. When there isn't any negative space for text, one option is to create text space by drawing an object. Here in the perfect family home image, a circle was drawn on the right side image to contain the text. To help the shape blend with the image, the shape's fill is set to 25% transparent. The blue, gold, and white in the shape are colors found in the image with the eyedropper tool. The type in the circle uses several of the tips we've covered so far. The use of type size to convey importance, and both the font color and font style of the perfect was varied to achieve emphasis and variety for that important phrase. The next image also shows the value of presenting text inside a shape. Here, shapes replace text boxes. 
If asked, our friendly lemur would agree the fill shapes on the right are much easier to read. Now in this next set of images, we again see filled shapes used as text boxes. One could almost imagine all those tips for lasting relationships being brought in one at a time in those transparent shapes that serve as text boxes and do not require the dreaded bullet points. And as this next image shows, if you decide to build a text list with rectangular shapes instead of text boxes, it isn't always necessary to line them up in a neat row on the left side. We've seen that too many times. In this image, our yoga instructor breaks apart the predictable vertical row of bullets and boxes as she thrusts her hands to the sky. Also note how the eyedropper tool was used to fill the boxes with the dominant colors of the image, gray and green. Finally, let's not forget about lines. As this pooch shows us, Horizontal lines can be used instead of boxes to set off text effectively but more subtly than a transparent layer or fill box. Again, a font was chosen to complement the mood of the image, and text and line color were taken from the canine's nose with the eyedropper tool. In this last image, which also uses lines to set off text, how many of the typographical tricks can you spot? All three lines of text are of different size. Is your wacky family justifiably the largest? Did you note use of the eggshell white color for the text and horizontal lines? Does that color, instead of the typical bright white, help elements of the slide blend together more? Is the bright orange of your wacky family wacky enough? Hopefully this presentation has provided justification for answering yes to each of those questions. And if you ever see something like this, you'll know exactly what to do about it. Never be afraid to use PowerPoint's amazing array of tools to make each of your slides something unique that holds an audience's attention while you make your important points.